All right, I am joined by our guest this week, a recent World Series of Poker online bracelet winner. Took down event number four, the $500 buy-in. Super turbo on the 4th of July, 1,179 entries. Took just shy of six hours of play. And coming out on top was Matt Bode, uh, known online as Bodister. Matt, congratulations on that win, man. Thanks, Dad. I appreciate it. It's been a pretty uh, crazy last couple of days. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine it was a, a super fast tournament uh, for one. You know, what was it? What was it like to experience a WSOP bracelet win in, in kind of such a short period of time and a, a turbo like that? Uh, that event number four was. It it happened so fast. Like I can't explain how fast it actually happened in lifetime. Because then, it, like, it is, looking back at it, it happened even faster. If that makes sense. Yeah, sure. It, I mean, I was report, doing the updates for Poker News, so I know how fast it went. We were struggling just to keep up with, uh, you know, with all the eliminations. And it was actually a a pretty tough final table. You had some guys there like Ryan Dodd, uh, two-time bracelet winner Kevin McPhee, uh, some other familiar names. You ended up defeating Brian Frasca in heads-up play. Um, what was the whole final table experience like for you? Honestly, uh, like, I feel like a lot of those guys, like, they're overhyped and, like, uh, the new set of online grinders that are coming in know these charts and know these solvers, like, way better than a lot of those guys. I thought a lot of those pros made a bunch of mistakes at the final table, to be honest. Well, let's talk about that because you actually had a tweet, which I thought was a great part of uh, uh, of your story. Uh, back at the end of June, you said – uh, tweeted here goes to uh, here goes to becoming a secret online crusher using PO solvers programs poker coaching sites backers and discord to ship a bracelet no retweets when this age as well obviously it <laughs> aged really really well and uh, I mean so is that the, your story you're a secret online crusher that uh, knows all your solvers and charts yeah, I've been grinding uh, ACR for a little bit now, and I know a lot of those pros know me on there, and they kind of stay away from me in a lot of spots. Um, and uh, it's kind of been like a, a hidden, like with Bovada not having like screen names and stuff. It's like you kind of bink, 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 and people don't really know about it, you know? Right. Well, I mean, we certainly know about you now winning a World Series of Poker bracelet. Um, for those, you know, like myself who don't know too much about you, can you share a little bit, uh, you know, how old are you, where are you from, and some things like that? Yeah, um, uh, I'm a Frisbee player. That's my, my MO. I've uh, been playing Frisbee for the last, you know, almost 15 years and won a world championship playing Ultimate Frisbee. And uh, one of my good buddies is Leaf Force and, uh, you know, another Frisbee player in the poker community and stuff. But I started playing poker back, uh, I want to say I was like 12 years old uh when i fa- made my first party poker account and like had a bankroll <laughs> sure. just by like referring referring friends if that makes sense um that was kind of the thing to do back then before tilt and i was a pretty good sit and go player and that's where the bodister name came and i would like you know play like nine man sit and go eleven dollars and like break even at like you know from when i was like 12 to 14 years old just knowing icm push fold spot <laughs> <laughs> And, and, how, and then, how old are you now? I'm 29 now. So then um, I then played tilt for a little bit. And it was more like one of those guys, like a micro guy that would try and like run up a stack or like run up an account from free rolls back then um, and play like those big documents that they had that were like, you know, a ton of fun on tilt. And uh, like in, when I turned 18, I drove up to the turning stone with one of my best friends and I like won my first poker tournament then. Um like the weekend I turned 18, I drove up to the turning stand and like won a tournament. And then, uh, I like didn't play for a little bit and kind of like focused on other things like school and all that. And just kind of was like a little bit of a cash grinder. And then when I turned, uh, I guess in 2012 parks opened, mm-hmm. I think. Um, and my brother became like a full time, like cash game pro and like, you know, just playing one, two and two, five and being able to beat those games. And he made me play in a tournament on Christmas Eve in like 2012, and I hadn't played in a while. And we took first and second at Parks, nice. Which which was pretty cool for like brothers to do that, you know, because um, we like took like what 70 percent of the prize pool or something crazy like that, you know. So did you guys end up? Um, did you guys chop, or did uh, did one of you get the better of the other? 
Uh, he got the better of me. He's, <laughs> he, at the time, he was a lot better than me. Um, and, uh, to this day, he's a way better cash game guy than I am. But, uh, I kind of have to take over, took over the MTT range and he knows that. Um, but then, so I stopped playing poker really. I like won a bunch of money then. And I was like, well, I don't need to play for a little bit and kind of like continued on with the frisbee grind. And it wasn't until DePaulo making a deep run in the Venom, me being like, these guys suck <laughs> and I need to start playing more poker. Um, and DePaulo kind of got me back into it with like a Twitch stream. Like I, like, I don't know how I stumbled upon it. And I was like, oh, this is hilarious. And then I kind of figured out ACR and I hit up Leaf about like playing a little bit more. And then I did a Cherokee circuit run right. with, with, with Leaf and got absolutely demolished. Like went kings to aces, I think three times on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was like I got crushed so bad. I like, you know, I, I walked walked away with my tail between my legs, um, and then I like started grinding like a shit ton online, um, and got like a coach and a little bit of, of a backing, like, you know what I mean, with right. Leafs help and like got enough guys behind me to like teach me exactly what I need to do because they all knew I had the edge over a lot of these people because I wasn't scared to push fold a lot. And like make that extra like raise over the top, like and sniff out weakness and just stuff it on people. Sure. So with that edge, with that edge alone, they like were like, we need to teach you more and more and more. Um, so then I like, you know, obviously I've learned GTO and all that nonsense, you know, and I've just like kind of piled my own game into that a little bit. And then I just like at this point, I like, like knowing Leaf and he's like, you know, the tightest pro out, you know, he's like this little knit in the corner and I just kind of use that as like, Oh, this is another nitty pro and just like stuff it on. <laughs> and they just, and they, it seems to be, they like, they're just all fold. And then your red line just goes straight upwards. And these people are playing with red lines going straight downwards and it makes a big difference, right. you know? So you're out there on the East coast, uh, which means you're playing from New Jersey, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. I went and played in my dad's basement. I actually live in Durham, North Carolina and okay. drove up and just like, uh, went for the weekend. I, Funny story, I had about like five thousand dollars to my name before this for this thing and just like, you know, went with it. Yeah, now you won it for ninety seven thousand dollars, which is a nice chunk of change. Yeah. So are you gonna be playing any more of these WSOP events? If you're you know, you said you traveled up, it sounds like you're back home now. Yeah, I back home. I might actually be leaving tomorrow morning to go play the five hundred freeze out by Wednesday. I'm not totally sure yet. And then I might fly to Vegas to meet up with Leaf and those that crowd of people to like um, play the rest of the series and see how I go. Or I may just like call it a quits and like, I'm not totally sure yet. I'm going to have to figure that out after, um, you know, I, I got a life still. So I got to like right. figure out all that, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, but I know I'm good enough to hang in this crowd and with all these pros and stuff. And I, I know I need to be like, you know, like spaghetti to my left. He basically gave me the tournament by just folding like all those big spots, you know? Right. Um, you know, you, you're an online guy, obviously a lot of online experience. I looked at your Hendon mob, you know, after you had won, not, in, not much in the live realm. And so I wanted to just ask real quick, this is a WSOP online series. They've given out online bracelet events in the past, but not as part of a huge series. And, you know, the focus this summer is really on these online events. So as an online player, you know, what does it mean to you to win a WSOP bracelet in an online event? Well, I think it was like, this is how I was going to win one. If I was going to win one, it would be just like this. Cause I knew I have like a full blown edge on all of those guys that aren't sitting in front of their computers for seven hours every night, like grinding out ACR and Bovada, you know, and the guys that are trying to sit in front of their computers and do that, they're playing on sites like WhatsApp and like poker stars that are super weak right now. And they're not playing against the best players in the world. So they're not getting that extra bit of experience in these big moments. And I think that showed in that tournament because that tournament came down to like people having six big blinds at the final table. Like I think the big stack was like eight big blinds, yeah. you know what I mean? With five people left and like you, none of those guys were playing ninja poker. They were like folding out for ICM pressure when there's a bracelet on the line. It like, didn't make sense to me. I was like looking around like, oh my gosh, no one wants to play poker right now, <laughs> you know? Well, so I'm like, of course, I'm going to start jamming my 10, seven offs and my queen, seven suits and all that when they're, you know, when they're only calling me with ace X and things like that, you know? Right. 
Well, I mean, it obviously worked out well. You're the last player standing. You got a bracelet to your name. One of the things I love, like I said, after the fact, you immediately retweeted your tweet from June 29th about, uh, you know, no retweets when this age as well. I retweeted it then from the Poker News account. I don't know. It's just, uh, I think you called your shot and you got it. I think that's amazing. Yeah. I, I On the calling the shot thing, like, I, I think that that's a thing with poker. I think that's like a big part of, you know, if you want to actually do well in this sport is you have to have that mental ability to kind of will it when it needs to be willed. Um, and if you're not, like, having that mindset, you, you're really not, like, getting those big wins and those big spots as much, I feel like. I think that the calling it and the knowing when it's coming and, like, that aspect, like, of understanding your chart and all of that, because, like, I've been, like, stagnant for almost three and a half months. So I knew it was coming. Like, I just, like, just what tournament is it going to come, you know? Well, and then one of the other things I liked is you immediately updated your Twitter profile to say WSOP bracelet champion and, you know, a well-deserved one of that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I had to do it. I, I mean, I guess I'm made now. I don't, I don't know how else to put in. I don't really know what I have to do next besides try and catch up to Phil, you know, <laughs> and just like put my head down and try and take Helmuth, Helmuth in 25 years at a heads up match when he's, you know, no longer can walk and looks like Doyle. <laughs> well, there you go. They say there's two types of players, uh, poker players, those with a bracelet and those without. You are now one of those with a bracelet and those interested in continuing to follow Matt Bode's journey. You can follow him on Twitter at Matt underscore Bode. That's B O D E 79. So once again, at Matt underscore Bode 79. Uh, Matt, congratulations, and thanks for t- taking the time to chat with us here at Poker News. Of course, Chad. You have a great one, and uh, appreciate you guys having me on the show.